This is the era that we're living in. And then we go back to something else. We are looking at the demand projections around water over the last couple of years. Now, I pulled up some very old graphs because we're very familiar with the new ones. To remind ourselves that the trends that we're talking about at the beginning of the 21st century don't look very different from the trends we were talking about 20 years ago. These are the trends from 1999. These come from the UN system, primarily from UNESCO, and it's gauging there for agriculture is the biggest increases in water use around the world. And this is on the back of many developmental strategies, including our own, on expansion of agriculture as a path to economic development and employment. It's talking about the increase in domestic use. It's talking about the increase in industry. Now, if one has to juxtapose that onto our ambitions in the National Development Plan, we have the same curves. We have switched a few things because we've switched, for example, agriculture and domestic because of the way we define domestic in, in South Africa is what happens at the top. So it's, it's residential use and it's also commercial use. And our commercial use and residential use as a combined factor is going to be our net biggest increase in our system. Two things about these trends is they're going in one direction and the second is those graphs are exponential. They're not linear gradients, they're exponential. <clears throat> And there is no scenario yet developed by any credible source anywhere in the world that is saying that there's going to be a fundamental difference in that. And this is important. And then on top of that, the 199 countries in the United Nations system have signed up to this. The Sustainable Development Goals. We have said to the world that whatever we have done with the MDGs, and some of us have done well and others of us have not, we are committing ourselves in the next 15 years to be able to eradicate poverty from the world completely. And in the 17 indicators, there's an indicator, SDG number six, that says that in these 15 years, by 2030, we will have universal access to safe water around the world. We have, will have improved sanitation access for every person on earth. This is about dealing with a two billion backlog. This is gigantic, and you know, when you absorb all of this, it starts to feel like this story. That we are understanding the burden, but the engine, the power that we have, is not good enough. Now, I've got the next couple of slides, there are a couple of old slides, and they're quite specific for the science and engineering community around the way we think. And um, it's about this. It comes from this story, and the slides were also stolen from the presentation of Ramesh Mashaka, with his permission afterwards. Uh, Ramesh Mashaka used to be the Director General of the CSIR for a long time. He's the guy who introduced into the Indian con uh, economy the concept of reverse pharmacology. Um, and it's, it's a very interesting concept, and something that we try to replicate ourselves. But his basic message, and this message he's been preaching for the last 30 years, Oh, I feel like I've been listening to you for the last 30 years, is this, is that we can't do the same things over and over again. That we have to do different things. We understand this. As a science and engineering community, we understand this. We're in the business of creation, creating new knowledge, new products, new services. But the second part is also important. That even with the things that we continue to do the way, uh, what we used to do before, we can't do it the same way. We have to do things differently. And to illustrate this, he used these couple of slides, and for those of you who have seen this already, my apologies, because these have been around for a little bit. And, and, and as I said in previous presentations of the past couple of years, I'm not casting any expression on any culture. I'm only telling you that these are pictures are from a Dr. Mannion, and it's in a certain country. It's just a little bit to the left of England. <laughs> and there was a folk who went out one evening, and as it happens, you, you've got to keep warm. And then you decided you need to go home. And one of the problems with that uh, pier is that it doesn't have a guardrail. So somebody, instead of putting the car into the first gear, put it into reverse, maybe. And this is, they ended up with a drink. So you do the logical thing. You say, well, we need to get the car out of the room, out of the bay. And you bring in a crane. <coughs> and the crane comes in, starts to do its job. Maybe it doesn't calculate how much of water is uh, inside the car already and what weight it, it has. You know, people are constantly surprised uh, that 
the density of water is, is one gram. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and, it's, and so the guy is trying this out. It's starting to work, and well, <laughs> it doesn't make it. Doesn't make it. So what do we do? I mean, for those of us who have done engineering maths as opposed to real maths, as the mathematicians say, <laughs> this is what we do. We say, well, clearly, it just wasn't big enough. Right. So we don't get a bigger crate. And of course the bigger crate works this time. Uh, for many reasons. Not the least of which half of the water has gone out of the car. Right? And then we say, well, we got the car out, now let's just bring the crate. Out. And of course, you know what happens. Right? And so what we do for ourselves, and this is a malaise of our planning system and the way we work is that if we have a, have a hammer, everything becomes a nail and we have to bang it. So the message is that if we're going to be successful going into the future, we're going to have to do different things and we're going to have to do things differently.